Hello, my name is John Hamilton and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how you can make a shader that makes a texture scroll in a certain direction. So this is going to be moving in UV coordinates or if you wanted to do some other kind of coordinates then you could but right now go to um, the easiest one you can use in the shader is the UV coordinates. So I'm going to be teaching you how you can use it with UV coordinates but this can be easily adapted to anything if you had world coordinates or even the screen coordinates. Um, 2D or 3D they're pretty much the same as well. So let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. Alright so the first thing we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and add a node. So we're going to go ahead and click this plus here and we're going to come down to the spatial node. We're going to go ahead and add that. Once it's added, we're going to go ahead and click back up here and we're going to find a object to dawn on. So why don't we use the test cube? So to search test. Um, oh, this not that. Test. And then you want to go ahead and find the test cube. It'll be under spatial and then you go to geometry instance and it'll be under that. Now that we have that, you can see it's got this weird texture. What we're going to go ahead and do is find where the material is and right here. So we're going to click that. We're going to go new shader material not fixed shader then we're going to go ahead and click on this go in and we're going to create a new shader and this is going to be a material graph shader so we're going to go click that and then we're going to click this again and this is going to open up the the graph so here we go so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and drag this out so we have some room so what we're going to first of all do is go up here and go to import and then we're going to go to texture and then we want to go ahead and get ourselves a texture. So I'm going to be working with a 3D shader today for a 3D object. So of course we're going to want to use a 3D texture. So I'm going to go ahead and find that on my computer. Find whatever texture you like. It doesn't matter. Um, just depending on what you want to do. Alright, so I found the texture I want. And you can go ahead and just find the one you would like to use. And then down here we want to find the target path. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And what the target path is, it's basically where is it stored inside of your project. So when you're inside of your project, you know, you have your different folders. So where are you going to save this to? Now since this is just an empty project, I'm just going to save it to the main directory. So just here. So I'm going to go ahead and click choose. And now it's just saved to the best directory. Now when you're doing this, one thing you will really want to make sure, and the, it's a reason I didn't just do it with this go.png icon, is you need this repeat to be enabled. This will not work if you don't have this repeat enabled. It will wreck it and it just will not work. So make sure this repeat is enabled. If this is not enabled, you're going to have some big problems and it's not going to work. So if you have some weird problems where it's not working, that will almost def most definitely be your problem. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go import. So now you can see I have my texture over here. So let's go ahead and add it into our shader. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click. And we're gonna come down all the way to texture ununiform. We're gonna go ahead and add that. We're gonna go ahead and drag this up. Let's go ahead and just make this a bit nicer. And then I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and just click on this and drag this across. Or you can click on this edit and you can click on load, all right? So that's two different ways you can get it. So you could use all these different ways and there's ways you can get like get global coordinates and if you would want to see a tutorial on how to get like a global texture coordinate so when you move it the texture kind of stays the same. Um, tell me and I'll be happy to do something on that. But right now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to just be using UV. Now this has a couple of problems. It, because of the way that the texture is going to be moving or scrolling however you want to say it it is you're going to have to set up your uvs correctly like if there's a seam in your uvs that's going to be very noticeable so you're going to have to be very careful with how you do your uvs but if it's just a flat plane uh, it was going to be fine so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get this rgb and plug this into the diffuse and now you can see we have a texture showing up here all right so it looks like nice and cool so what we're going to go ahead and do is move this over and then move this over of course and we're going to zoom out a little bit and what I'm going to go ahead and do is right click and I'm going to add a vector ununiform and what a vector ununiform does is it, um, it basically allows us to have this vector here that we can use and do stuff with but it's going to let us edit it outside of the shader. So every time we want to change it, we don't have to change it in here. And that allows us to kind of instance the shader, use it in different places um, and change of, change the of values. So really, really handy. Um, if it's anything ununiform, 
right here this means it's going to be out you're going to be able to change it from outside of the shader if it's um constant here then it's it's basically that's how it is it stays the same all right that's what what that's why we added this effect to our new form what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're also going to go ahead and right click and we're going to use this time now what this time does here this little time node is it basically just counts up it, it resets like every hour or so i think but for your shaders if you want anything to do with like time or anything moving this node is invaluable all right so that's what it does it just continually counts up basically um so one another thing we're going to need to add is we're going to go right click and we are going to find a uh, scalar plus vector all right this one here and we're going to go ahead and add that an operator operation and then we're going to go ahead and plug the green into the green so a vector into a vector and we're going to uh, this scalar i believe they're called into the scalar all right so we want to keep this on multiply so the reason we're doing this is I want to be able to control what direction it goes in. And if we multiply this uh, vector by this number here, if it's zero, we're going to get nothing. So if it's zero, 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 it's not going to move. And if we times it by 0.1, then it's going to be slow. It, but if we times it by one, it's going to be normal speed. Um, but by two, it's going to be faster. And this just allows us to easily have this nice simple thing here, which we can change the direction it's moving in. And this is the most simple way I've found to do it, so that's why we set it out like this. So now we have a vector which basically we can choose which direction it's moving. And since we're working with 2D coordinates, since we're going to be adding this to UV, uh, this, this bottom one doesn't actually matter. But if you're working with 3D stuff, this bottom one would work just fine as well. So, uh, but the top two ones are the only ones that really matter in this case. So now we've got that, we're going to go ahead and go right click and we're going to go ahead and add a, just a vector operator, operation, operator. Um, and we're going to go ahead and grab this and we're going to plug this in. Then we're going to grab the UV and plug this in. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this out and plug this into the texture. Oh, that was the wrong one. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into the UV here. So now you see nothing's really happening. But if we go ahead and put a number in here, so I'm going to go with 1. Let's do that, and I'm going to go ahead and click Enter. And instantly you can see the texture is moving and scrolling. Now you can see here it's weird, and it's going up, and then it's going across. Um, it, the reason for that is just because of how the UVs are on this cube. So when you're working with something like this, you're going to want to have the UVs going correctly and lining up. So if you had a river, you would want to do the UVs so they're all in a nice row, all connected up. All right? So that's the only reason for that. But if you're working like if you look at the top and you were to scale this up and so on, it would work perfectly for anything that like that. So water or water surface or anything like that will work fine. But also we can go ahead and go point two here. And as you can just see right here, it's going nice and slow, which is uh, really handy. And here we can also go point one and it's going to go in a different direction, or I could go one, and you can see it's uh, it's going in the directions we choose. So this is a really handy way to set up a moving texture and this is more useful this is there's a lot more uses you can use this for um so i thought i'd teach everyone how to this handy technique because i have been finding it quite useful for working on my water shader and stuff but anyway yeah that that is the tutorial for today if you want to see uh tutorials on different shader techniques or something go ahead and comment what kind of techniques you like to see um and i'll see if i can help you out anyway have a great day Keep making games and I'll see you next time.